I'm going to show you how we go from this rusty mess to this beautiful laser cut work. Well, welcome to the fourth instalment of this transit build for Sleaford Recovery, the uh, RAC built V8 Transit. Well, as you can tell from the last three episodes, if you picked up on them, we have uncovered quite a few little bits of uh, horror stories from uh, previous builds. So we're going to make it into something really good, fit for purpose, you might say. Just to summarise, I've cut out a lot of the rust on this outer panel and uh, done some repair patches inside there. The, uh, the rust has kind of set in and there were some poorly added patches by previous, previous owners. I'm going to be cutting out all of this steel here underneath and the same on this side here. I'm going to do all that, probably off camera because it's a hell of a lot easier and faster to do that and I feel like you've seen quite a lot of grinding and cutting and metal work on the removal side. I want to focus on the rebuild of it today. There's uh, going to be a few other little bits and pieces to tidy up and then it's going to be back to Ben and he's going to, you know, take over again. been quite a lot of metal to take out of there and we'll just get rid of all the rot. So I designed in SolidWorks this assembly so we've got th the same thing each side assembly of parts to hold the suspension each side and uh, I've gone ahead and had those laser cut. I always like laying things out like this it kind of looks like how they do it on the shows. <laughs> the main job that these parts have to do is hold the suspension in uh, in this area and then they also need to they've got this new feature where they're holding on to the the cross member create this cross member to replace the scabbiness what was there before it's just going to look a lot neater and be able to be clocked nicely and whatnot This is the bracket, all in one piece. Suspension uh, mounts through that hole. Time to uh, check a little bit of fitment, hey? <clears throat> so that's how it's designed to go. I've got a little bit more to trim out on this front piece, like here, I don't think you can see that, that bit's in the way, but other than that, I'm feeling good about it, so this piece is designed to be welded up there, we've run a seam down there, and all of these little slots in the bottom are designed to run, I'm pretty pleased with how that's looking, so this is weld through, zinc rich primer, give it a good shake, You might have to wait quite a few years for four millimetre thick steel to rust through. And let that go off and then I shall do the other side. Boy, that, sh that stuff goes off quick. Want a nice mug? Let me know and I'll put them on the shop.
So there it is all welded up. Got as many uh, places on the inside as I could. Probably added a couple of kilos to it. Ready, ready to be installed on the, on the truck. Just getting a bit more weld through on this where I'm not going to be able to get to it after. And uh, we should be good to go for installing it. I won't, I won't do these side bits because they're just going to get dirty again. Well, dirty, scratched, whatever. But yeah, that's what the piece looks like. I feel like w when you put the silver primer on it, it looks like, like it does on the CAD drawing. I think that's quite cool. Oh, just a bit more in there. It's just uh, whatever you're going to be able to get on this stuff, really, I think. You just want to try and hold back that rust. So, Ben, you need to get some Lano Guard or something pumped in here, some sort of bitumen-based product to stop it from rusting. Okay, so it's difficult to find a reference. I did have a line scratched in the top there, but what with cutting metal away from the uh, cross member from that piece, it's hard to tell. But this, the end of this rail here is gonna be a datum point. That's not been cut about, it's not rusted, it's, it's right there, yes. Um, and where that join is, is perfectly lined up with the end of there, if you see what I mean. The join, that plate to the next plate. So then we've got this this side we've still got the, the hole in place for the suspension you can see i've put a scratch just there to mark where the end of that plate will be and if we line that up we can verify that the hole is in the correct spot so now we know that that's in the correct spot we can pull it into there with this with this clamp and we'll put that straight edge flat on there again and that's how we'll line it up on the other side as well. I do believe that I'm going to remake this piece at the top, cut that out so that I can put a whole new piece in there, continue that nicely. I think I'll just cut that in a bit. I think they've removed material along here for the new engine install. Whether they needed to or not, I'm not sure, but I've got a plan for, for this front piece as well. But yeah, I'm just gonna do a little just gonna do a little bit more clamping up and then we can get to get, get to welding this into place, tacking it in. And I do believe that I'm gonna tack it into place before going any further. And then uh, get filthy again doing that side. That's the uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, so I thought you might like to hear me speaking for a little while, uh, just whilst we're going through this little montage of installing the uh, driver's side suspension, carrier, whatever. So I'm, I'm here working in the uh, unit on a Saturday, and, uh, and I've got this thing called uh, YouTube Studio. Any of you guys who've got a YouTube channel, if you're not using YouTube Studio, you really should be, because uh, it allows you to keep track of your stats and all that stuff. And it's just quite interesting, isn't it? Anyway, you get a comment come up, some friends of mine, I've had negative comments in the past, um, mostly about sign writing. People are really bitchy about sign writing for some reason. And I normally turn it around and like point out that I'm doing sign writing as part of two businesses I'm running and saving money and whatnot. It's just another tool, another trade, whatever. Anyway, normally get some feedback and the people end up just being all right. But the more comments you get on your videos, the more YouTube will push it because they don't care whether it's negative or positive interaction. They just see interaction or that the algorithm does. There's this channel. I'm going to put it up now because I was looking for inspiration for doing the GMC flatbed and this guy's flatbed came up and he fabricated absolutely everything using his plasma cutter, a grinder. He's done it all by hand. He's got a really good channel. I reached out to him and emailed him and said, Hey, you've got a really good channel. I think it's smart. You know, you should be getting a lot more views. And he's like, yeah, just due to the negativity of what you get on the internet, I've just decided not to do it anymore. And I'm like, that's a real shame. 
So do me a favour, go on his channel and just make a positive comment. And it just it galls me because he's working hard. He's putting a good video together. He's you know arguably better at this car stuff than me. And he's just not getting anything. And other people I know who've got a YouTube channel, they like deleting the comments when they're negative and that. And I've always kind of embraced it. It's always like when you're getting the haters come out, like you're doing it really well. It's like the first thing to do is look at their profile. And it's normally a zero content profile. And you're like, oh, it's just some made up name where you want to be anonymous and you want to say these troll like things without getting any recourse or someone coming around your house or whatever it's just like they're just nothing so yeah for all my friends who regularly comment on the on the channel and you've got your own channels just keep going and when you get a hater comment just embrace it and thank them for helping the channel move along a little bit further and i'm pretty sure that would probably annoy him a little bit more than you getting wound up but you will come across these people in life and just ignore them hey that was my little rant over with Right, so that's the first side done. All I've got to do is this side. And just like that, it's fitted. Just like the other side. Pretty happy with that. It's in there solid with those six tacks. So now it's just a matter of uh, climbing underneath and doing the welds up under there. So as you can see, we've got those slots. I may not fill them all in, depends how easy they weld in but it's going to be a pretty uh, gnarly angle for me to weld that underneath here but we'll see how it goes So you see, got some nice worlds in there. So that's all the extra worlds I'm going to do. Those will be ground flat. There's going to be there's going to be a piece I'm going to cut, which will go over there and come down to about there. It'll probably have a little curve around that bit, and that's going to tie it into this top piece as per the factory. So that'll be like a two millimeter piece, I believe. And then uh, I filled in, when I cut this top piece off, this is a cut there, which I need to just, I kind of touched this member a little bit. So uh, I filled that in, repaired that with a couple of little beads. But yeah, it's gonna be time to uh, tidy up a little bit and install the springs. The main push this weekend is to make it a roller again. So even if the suspension has to come off again, I need to be able to push it out because I've got to get a load of gear out the back of the unit later in the week. So that's why I'm back here on Sunday. Like a glove. Thank you. 
Well, transit's back on his own weight again. Pretty happy with that. He's back on his own weight again. He's on his own suspension again. It's been a long weekend so far. But I'm happy with it. I'm happy with how it's gone. Well, I think that's where I'm going to leave it, this one. Well, I think there's going to be a little bit more work to do. There's going to be some sheet metal and stuff like that. And I might put one more video together for you, but it'll be like a highlights thing, I think. The main thing I wanted to show you is that fabrication, what I do. I feel like... Uh, I feel like it's going to be a real improvement. Anyway, this whole thing is done by uh, Fighting Talk with Sleaford Recovery with ben, Ben's channel. And if you're not subscribed to Ben, I think you should go and have a look at his channel. It's a good channel. He's, uh, he's really helped me out. A lot of you have come from his channel, so I appreciate that. I also appreciate all of you other subscribers who have been here for the long haul. Uh, so, yeah. Catch you later. Yeah, I do quite like this part of the day. Off to work on a Ford Transit. <laughs>